I know it talks about, you know, the new Westminster team, the Kamloops team, and the London team in 05. Um, I think that's our team in 2010 was the best uh, team assembled in the Memorial Cup just by the results and uh, by what we did in the four games in uh, Brandon. It was a group of guys that were all competitive. Uh, you know, we, we had uh, almost all of us played under Captain Mickey Renault, and, and he passed away, and that was a, you know, a traumatic experience for us. And it was something that, that ended up bringing us a lot closer together as a group. And the one thing that he taught us was he was competitive in everything he did. You don't talk about our Windsor Spitfire team without talking about Mickey Renault and the leader that he was, and he, he paved the way for us, and he was exactly the person that he learned about leadership from. He treated us all amazing regardless of the age and, and it's something you'll never forget. He really brought our team together and, and he was just the, the ultimate leader for us. Mickey kind of took us all under his wing and for me too, he picked me up every day, drive me to the rink, he lived a couple streets over. Um, you know, him and his family, his parents are such nice people. Uh, I still stay in touch with them once in a while when we're in town and it's great to catch up and see them. and. Um, and he was the leader of our group. Um, he, uh, he led by example, really. The way he played the game, you know, he played it the right way, he played hard, um, did all the dirty things, you know, he'd fight if he had to, he'd score, he'd stick up for his teammate at, you know, any second. Um, and it was tough to go through. I mean, there was obviously a shock uh, in him being from Windsor too. One day he's there, next day he's gone. He created the, the winning culture for our group amongst us, I mean, the coaches always preached it too, and they, and they live that way too, but to see a guy actually live it when he's 18, bringing 16-year-olds under his wing, it, you know, there's no other way for us after that. And Mickey was the 18-year-old that everyone looked up to, and he was 6'3", 215, 220. He was the guy, and, and when, he, uh, when that happened, when he passed, all the young guys kind of said, holy cow. He was the biggest, strongest guy, like what is going on? But um, the community rallied, um, you know, school rallied, all the parents came in, obviously the league, our, we shut down for 10 days, the Spitfires did, and I think as bad as it was, made those kids stronger in the end. Um, this kid's leadership was great. He'd be the first to tell you what's wrong, what to do, where to go. I actually went to grade school and high school with Mickey, and he was just one of those guys that I always looked up to from a young age, and everybody else did. He was fun-loving, he was competitive. Uh, he'd give you the shirt off his back. He'd go out there, and, and he wasn't ever a, a, a great fighter or anything, but he'd fight a guy for you in a second. He'd block a shot for you in a second. He'd take a hit for you in a second, and he was one of those guys that Led by example, he was vocal in the room, he, he did everything that you want to see in a captain, and more. And then all of our guys would see that, all of our young guys would see that. If a young guy had a problem, they could go to Mickey anytime, any place. And he wasn't one of those guys that treats you like a rookie. He'd treat you like a friend, he'd treat you like a teammate. And we all saw that and we all kind of grew from that. And I think we all kind of adapted that into the way that, that we treated each other and the way we acted on the ice and the way we acted off the ice. He was your captain. He was the kid who was going to lead you. He was a kid who was possibly coming back for that Memorial Cup year as an overager. For the kids, I mean, it's a devastating thing to have to, to go through. And I mean, I, I can't imagine as a 16 or 17 year old, you know, being in that environment, what it would have been like. But I, I think the fact that they all sort of bonded and just sort of stuck together in that room and, and just, you know, leaned on one another to sort of get through that and, and move forward. And I mean, you know, we all learned that in life that life doesn't let you sort of stop and stand in the moment. It forces you to continue to push forward and move on. And, and that team eventually did move on from that. He taught me how to be a captain. And, you know, I, I couldn't have been prouder to, to take over the next year and, and put the C on. Uh, you know, I, I didn't feel like I deserved it, but, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from him. And, and you know, it, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was huge for me to be able to do that. Harry was our, our rock. He, he kept us in line more than anyone. And, and Harry wasn't a quiet guy. He was just um, more focused and everything that he said had a meaning. So he's a little bit more of a serious demeanor, but at the same time, he's a really funny person, but he was the perfect guy to be leading our team from the top because we had a, 
a group of so many different personalities and at times we, we could get too loose but having Harry there at the top and, and leading our team was the, the, the perfect uh, personality to, to do the job for us. Yeah, I was the kind of captain that just led by example uh, and that's, that's kind of the way I was taught growing up was uh, I wasn't always the most vocal guy out there. I was definitely not the best player. I was honestly I was one of the worst players on the team and, and I always was growing up. Every team I ever played for I was kind of you know, on the lower spectrum of, of who's got skill, who's got speed, who's got, you know, any kind of hockey sense, really. Harry's a man of few words, but when he spoke of guys acted up, we had a high, high-end team with a lot of contracts on it, and guy, his kids, you know, had some money from signing, and Harry would mop it up right away if there's a problem. There's no doubt he was the general. Um, he filled his role admirably. I think he was number four or five defenseman. Big, nobody went near him. Excellent penalty killer, played within his means. His leadership and character is huge. He knew when to press the buttons with that. He knew when to you know, let the guys have fun. He knew when to give the guys a little push and a little talking to, so he was excellent. To learn, you gotta go through some tough patches. In that first season, we just, we weren't a very good team and, and it was new ownership and, and Boogie and Warren and, and then DJ and, and Billy Bowler was our coach our first year. They, they put a lot of work into us. We had long, long practices. It was a tough year for them because, you know, we all hate losing, but they did what they had to do. They stayed the course. We all got a lot of minutes that year in developing. The next year, we got Taylor Hall, Ryan Ellis, uh, Austin Watson, Jesse Blacker. I just remember going on the ice in that training camp and seeing uh, especially Halsey and Ellis, the first time they touched the ice, it was, it was pretty special. Was, uh, everyone was kind of like, wow, these guys can really, really play. And, and I remember we probably overachieved a little bit during the season. I think we tied for second in the conference, but uh, the, the Sioux beat us on a tie break. So we ended up in the third spot and had to run into a Steven Stamkos team that was you know, kind of built to win that year too. At the end of it, I think we were all just a little bit worn out. And um, Coming into our third year and, and after that summer, I think we were all prepared to, you know, to really challenge for the league and, and that's what we did. We had all played together for two, three years, everybody together. Uh, we'd had the same coaches, same ownership, same, same mentality and, you know, we were working with that game plan that we're going to be a championship, one, championship team one day. And I, I don't know if we thought it was going to be that year. I, I think we were actually pushing for 2010, but, uh, you know, we, we had the soldiers that year. Uh, we had the game plan. We had the coaching staff. Everybody kind of bought into the program and uh, you know what, it worked out that year. When you're going through it as a teenager, we're not thinking we're ready to win or we're not ready to win. We're just going out there playing hockey and expecting to win. I think that's the best way to describe our team is we didn't think, we didn't have any other expectation other than winning. And that came again from our, our leadership, our, the, the top end of our organization. I think we went in a little too overconfident and uh, you know we were probably the toughest team in the OHL and you know the first game we had two guys with broken sh broken collarbones it was Jesse Blacker and uh, and uh, Shuggy were both hurt and we're like what's going on here we're big bad spitfires and we got our asses kicked and uh, we weren't playing well we were missing things. I don't think they were ready for for that sort of intensity from from either team and I think it caught him a little off guard. And it's tough for that any team that comes into the Memorial Cup because it's a whole different thing from going through that, you know, six week grind to win a championship in four rounds and then suddenly, boy, your tournament life can be over in four days. I remember after going 0-2, we were all, all pretty bummed, but I remember walking back from, uh, from dinner with Shutron and, and Timmins. And so we were walking back from dinner and I said, guys, we have to win one game. We'll go on a roll here or whatever. And, and they're like, you have no idea how hard it is. Like this tournament go, comes and goes like that. But, you know, by the time we got to the hotel, we were in a little bit better spirits. I think we just started to take it down to, I think Boogie broke it down to, you know, one shift at a time kind of thing. And then period by period. And we just kind of built off that. They, could, they weren't rattled by it. They weren't, you know, daunted by the challenge of it. They, they knew if they could just get one, get rolling and they did. I don't think it was anything we were doing wrong. Uh, we went in nervous. We went in uh, very serious. Our, our mentality was we're here to win. We're here to, to uh, you know, come home with a Memorial Cup. And obviously that's, that's everybody's plan there. Uh, but I think the nerves got to us. Uh, I think uh, we were on a stage that none of us had ever been on before. And after those two games, we kind of sat down. We went out as a team. Uh, we actually had a pool tournament. 
uh, had some dinner and we were just like, you know, we kind of looked around the room and said, we just got to win. Win a couple games here. We've been doing it all year. Uh, you know, we set a franchise record that year for most wins in a season. We knew we could do four in a row and we kind of just took it one game at a time. You know, we win this third game, we get to go to the tiebreaker. Then we'll, we'll focus on the tiebreaker then. And, and I think it was that we, we just took it one game at a time and, and obviously it worked out. I'm not going to lie, Ivy and I had doubts, you know, but we were too good to, uh, much like Ramuski down 0-2 and, and instead of the boys, we're too good for this, we're not going to go down like this. I think in Ramuski we're down after the second period, three to one, and Mitchell went crazy, scored three goals. As a team, we were still confident. We had no, there was no, um, you know, lack of trust or doubt in our minds that, you know, it was done. Um, I, th I think before, before that next game, we went out as a team and, and had kind of just a day to ourselves. And uh, I think we went and played pool uh, for the afternoon and just kind of relaxed and kind of got our minds out of the game and, and the tournament and just, and that's kind of what we did all year. We just played. And um, so I think we just got back to the way, uh, you know, mental area or aspect that we needed to be in. And then we played uh, uh, Kelowna, a team that, you know, played, I guess, more similar to our style and, and maybe a team at the time that we needed to run into uh, to get back on track. And then once we did that, we just got rolling. And um, I mean, even then going into the tiebreaker game, we were down down two or three and, and Dale Mitchell had a huge hat trick to bring us back. I mean, um, so you know, there's, there's so many things that go into coming back in that tournament. Um, and then obviously getting in the semifinals, going in overtime. Um, maybe, you know, I scored that game to, to win enough a rebound from Halsey. Um, and then going to the finals, really we felt that there's no, no stopping us. Um, and we, you know, at that time, obviously, we played the most games in the tournament. We're on a roll, and we're just going. Uh, Kelowna had a little bit of a break, um, and we just were able to jump on them right away and get out with a lead and really just didn't look back at that point. I'll never forget, like, we got off to a really, really quick start against Kelowna, and then just from there, Engelage was awesome, and, and we kind of just, just hung on because they probably outplayed us, especially after that first period, and their goaltending probably let them down a little bit too, but... We, we knew if we came out with a hot start, I think we could, could hold on, and that's exactly what we did. We had a, a great team mentality. We had a great group in the room. Everything was joking around all the time. You know, when we were out there, we were serious. You know, night before game, we were serious. All that, we, we took our practices serious, our gameplay serious, but uh, just as a team, we were all best friends. We knew we went down two games. It was, you know what, we can still do this. We, we still got this. We still got our, our, our fans supporting us. We all had our families there. The coaching staff was incredible. It was back to business, back to video, back to what are we going to do tomorrow? And, you know, we went out four straight from there and nobody's ever done it before. So uh, it was incredible to be a part of it. Everyone's seen the clip a hundred times is when Hamannick buried Halsey and I thought it was over. I kind of whipped my lanyard off and ran down there. Then I got halfway down and the doc gave me the sign like he's okay. I'm like, really? Oh, there's a big hit in the corner, it goes in, looks, you know, looks bad. I think if it was anybody else too, it would have been a different story. But he, um, you know, bounces right back, comes next shift, puts one through his leg at the blue line, uh, goes down, scores. Uh, he came out and scored one of the nicest goals maybe of the tournament of, of the year and uh, so he rolled on very tough kid obviously had a huge win the first game like seven to one or something and just got on a roll I mean we were just playing in that tournament it's so important just to get that first win we knew our expectations we knew all right we're gonna win again we're gonna go through the exact same path um, we're gonna dominate the the season it was really just a special year everything kind of came together as you would want it to, you know, as you always dreamed it would be. In the finals, we just got off to a great start and and looked like we caught a little bit of a tired Brandon team and, and we just never let the let our foot off the gas in that game at all. I'm very proud to be able to say that I could be a part of that and to be able to lift a cup at the end of it twice, um, bring it to my teammates, bring it to my coaching staff, bring it to all these guys that, that helped me along the way to get to where I was, that, that was incredible. We lose our captain, and uh, that was that was you know a, a horrible experience for all of us. But again, it brought us together closer as a group, and 
and guys really bonded together and, and got over that and, and, and brought ourselves to the next level. And then, you know, the next year we go to Ramoski and we're down 0-2. And uh, they said nobody's ever done it. Nobody's ever come back and won the tiebreaker and won four straight to win it all, and we did it. Next year we come back, we're down 0-3 to Kitchener in the playoffs. And there's not too many teams that have come back after being down 3 nothing in a, in a seven-game series. And a lot of people counted us out, but we, we had our, our true fans behind us. We had our families behind us. And, and we all knew that we could do it in this room. And we'd begin to, been together for so long. It was just, you know, you could look around the room and, and nobody was phased. Uh, everybody knew we had it in us. The coaches knew we had it. The, the staff, you know, our training staff was incredible. Everybody was just, you know, four games. We've been winning four games straight all year. Let's just go do it again. And it was that mentality. And, we all just knew we had it in us. We knew that every guy next to you was going to do whatever it took, whether it was blocking a shot, whether it was taking a punch, whether it was uh, drawing a penalty, whether it was, you know, going out there and getting in a big fight because, you know, somebody hit your goalie or star player. You know, everybody was willing to do it from the top to the bottom. We weren't just a team saying we were a team. We, we lived it behind closed doors where no one could see. Uh, we loved coming to the rink and playing for each other and we had such a good group of guys. and. We really, really enjoyed uh, being around each other and I'll never forget winning that uh, final game in Brandon. It was a little bittersweet because, uh, you know, the game was kind of in hand in the third period, so that last 10 minutes, everyone's kind of, you know, looking around, oh, this is probably the last time we're ever going to play together, but we won another championship, so it was awesome, but at the same time, we knew uh, we were all going our separate ways for the most part of the night, end of that season. For me, it was a little surreal, and everybody always uh, makes fun of me and says, you know, you didn't even smile. You didn't smile year one, you didn't smile year two. I was the happiest guy in the ice. You know, I was, uh, it was just one of those moments where, you know, everything's kind of sinking in, and dream come true, it's such a cliche, but for me, it was a dream come true to just be able to play for the Spitfires, uh, to play in the OHL. I grew up watching these guys. I think those kids matured and always had them with them and obviously you see the pictures of the jersey and I think about them all the time, you know, you drive in, it's make your run away, uh, the stuff on the ice, you go by old pictures, you see them, you go by the display upstairs, um, it's all around all the time.